Well, good day, everybody. Steve from Mud Ducks Touring Australia. Today, I want to talk to you about our life choices, and perhaps some of this will help you in some decisions. What do I mean by our life choices and things that will help you? Well, I'll tell you a little story about how we've made some choices, how things have come about and where we're at today. So, I'll start by telling you a little story. I've been playing with four wheel drives, doing remote touring for about 30 years. And over that time, I've had four wheel drives, four wheel drives with tents, four wheel drives with swags, four wheel drives with camper trailers. I've even had four wheel drives with small caravans, but that was before my YouTube days. So, uh, what this video is about is to tell you, or give you an idea, not so much tell you, give you an idea of our thought processes into how we travel, how we camp, and what we're going to do in the future. So, we'll start out by not going through too many details other than just a very, very quick rundown. So the, I started out for driving with an old 40 series Land Cruiser. It was a good old truck and I used to camp out of just a touring tent, a sleeping bag and a, uh, an air mattress type of thing. And that was how, how I did it. We won't get into cooking gear in this video, guys. This is just about accommodation and traveling and what we did. And back at that time, it was about hard tracks and wheeling and doing that kind of stuff. Just get there at the end of the day and um, just camp, sleep, and back into your car and do it all again the next day and try not to break stuff. Now, moving on from the 40 series, went to a Hilux, which was much nicer and just more pleasant to camp out of. Still had the old touring tent and uh, went on my first long distance touring excursion. Actually headed up to Cape York. Uh, met up with some friends in Cairns and uh, two Hiluxes and up to Cape York we went. Made it to the tip, it was fantastic. Still the old touring tent and just a Hilux and the appropriate gear. That got me thinking more about full-time travel and traveling longer trips in general. The Hilux got moved on and the 80 series came about. Now my 80 series, I wound up with a roof rack, an awning, very rudimentary awning by the way, but an awning nevertheless. Still the old touring tent, and this is pretty well the theme of what I've been doing for a while. Had the old touring tent and traveled like that in the 80 series. That 80 series took us up to the Cape again, uh, all the way across to Darwin, down through the center of Australia, and literally west east on the French line across the Simpson Desert. Just myself and Karen at that stage. And that was a fantastic uh, truck to do that kind of thing in. I decided I'd like something a little bit more comfortable than a tent and air mattress. So I moved on to the first of our camper trailers, but that didn't happen until we changed the car. My old 80 series was a great car for four-wheel driving, but not a great car for touring. It was um, pretty uh, pretty tall, had a lot of body roll, and it was just not the most pleasant thing for a long distance trip. So we moved it on and uh, wound up with a, a GU Patrol. That GU became our touring truck for quite a few years. and it wound up towing an ultimate camper trailer. Now that changed camping a lot for us into an ultimate. Fantastic trailer, would follow the GU anywhere. And it went all over the shop. It did some um, high country stuff. It did some outback stuff, remote New South Wales, remote Queensland. Another Cape trip uh, that took the uh, camper trailer the whole length of the telegraph track 
no problem whatsoever. So that was fantastic. And it was comfortable and great. It was beautiful to camp out of. So that got us to thinking to, uh, we'd like to do this as a more permanent thing. So um, moving on from the GU, we had the 200 series, which we still have at the present time. And this is where the story really starts. Now, yes, we've towed a different camper trailer for 200, towed a couple, but uh, still over 200. And 200 was bought with the view that we would travel full time, probably towing the ultimate initially. And then we realized, no, ultimate, if you're going to live in it, was just not going to have enough room. So now we've started looking at caravans. Now, this time I'll tell you, we don't have a caravan but we have made up our mind on the caravan we want. So, this got us into researching caravans and what we need. Now what we need, and what you guys need, are probably different things. But for Karen and myself, we worked out, if we're gonna live in it full time, it needs to have a decent bed, it needs to have a decent kitchen area, a decent lounging area where you can sit and not be in each other's way if somebody's working in the kitchen or in the bedroom, you're not in each other's way. That's amazing how, how you can get in each other's way in a caravan. And also with modern vans, we needed an ensuite, shower, toilet facility, all that kind of stuff. It's getting harder and harder to free camp unless you have toilets and grey water capability anyway. So um, why not have that all in a caravan? So the search started. Let's have a look at what caravans we need. Now, Karen and I worked out fairly quickly in the piece for us that the caravan we'd need would probably be about 19 foot, 20 foot, 21 foot, around that kind of uh, length. So that's what we started looking at. We also learnt fairly quickly that realistically, a single axle was not gonna do it. The dual axle was gonna be better for the payload, certainly more stable to tow and just generally a nicer thing to uh, be towing. When we bought the Land Cruiser, we figured that would be able to do the job. Three and a half ton towing V8 should do the job nicely. And that was our plan, tow of a Land Cruiser. At one stage, we were gonna cut the Land Cruiser, make it into a dual cab, put a tray on it, and be able to live our Land Cruiser independently to the caravan if we needed to. And that's been the thought for the last seven years. Sadly, in the last five years, we've realized caravans are getting heavier. Off-road caravans in particular are getting heavier. And that in itself is a problem. Here's where the research starts. We're trying to work out what we can carry in a Land Cruiser. And our Land Cruiser is heavy. It's GVM upgraded to 3.8 ton. But it has a bull bar, rock sliders, winch, it's got a rear bar, it's got a long range fuel tank, it's got the spare wheel on the rear bar, it's got a set of drawers, fridge, all the usual stuff, roof rack. Up until recently it had an awning, but um, those following on Instagram and Facebook will know that I lost that the other day um, due to a freak gust of wind. Yeah, that's, that's life. So the cruise is very heavy. In fact, it's 3.4 tonnes. And that's before Karen and I get in it and want to take it anywhere. Now, it has got its 40 litres of water and it's fully loaded at about 3.4 to 3.5. Karen and I get in it. I'm not a little bloke, as you know. I weigh 120, maybe a bit more. Kaz weighs 70-ish, but I don't know. Let's not talk about Kaz's weight, she's a girl. You know what they're like, right? Anyhow, put me and Kaz in the car. It's 3.4 to 3.5 tonne. It can only weigh 3.8 tonnes, GVM. Now, if I put the ball weight of a modern caravan onto the back of it, it's gonna go over 3.8. Now, I can upgrade the GVM again to four, four tonne, maybe even 4.2. 
that's going to cost me some money. But in the end, it could be done and I could be towing a three and a half ton caravan. Now therein is the big thing. 3.5 ton towing capacity, 3.5 ton caravan. So just have a quick drink, guys. Three point five ton caravan. Try and find a good off-road caravan that weighs less than two point eight to two point nine tons tear weight. Now, at two point nine tons, you go. I've got six hundred kilos. I can load in six hundred kilos. That'll do it. Well, no. A good off-road van, especially one you want to go a long distance, is going to have up to 300 litres of water capacity, maybe a bit more. So using rough maths, let's call it 3.9 tonne tear. We've got 600 kilos. There goes 300 kilos in water. Now we only have 300 kilos left. Now we don't want to use generators, sure, but we have one because if the weather's crap, for a long period, you've got to charge your batteries to live off grid. So we've got one, there goes 30 odd kilos, 10 litres of fuel for it, call it 10 kilos. So we've got 40 kilos, we're down 260 kilos. And that's about loading our gear, groceries, tools, everything else into it. Now, I honestly don't think 260 kilos is going to cut it. Imagine a decent amount of groceries is probably 100 kilos. Carrying some water, all your clothing, all that stuff. Your cooking, your, you know, all that stuff, all your gear, utensils, it all weighs something. I reckon you'd crack that 260 kilos pretty quickly. I haven't even included the weight of the Weber. The Weber's got to be in there somewhere. So 260 kilos of total carrying capacity is really not going to do it. That's with a 3.5 ton ATM van. So let's look at a 4.5 ton ATM van. Great. Most of the big caravan manufacturers that make vans that are 3.5 also make the ATMs for 4.5. It's usually not a big step up. So awesome. Now instead of having 260 kilos of load capacity, we've got 1.2 ton round figures. I don't think all our gear weighs 1.2 tonnes, I really don't. So that's fine. New problem. The 200 series can only tow three and a half tonne. The caravan can weigh four and a half tonne. Chances are it's going to be over 3.5. The 200's overloaded, can't do it. So new dilemma. We need to move the 200 on. It's sad. I love the 200. It's a great car. It's been fantastic in the time we've had it. But it can't tow four and a half tons. It just, just can't. It's, it's not legal to do it. It's probably unsafe and you're certainly not insured if that happens. This leads us to the new question of what's going to replace the Land Cruiser as a towing vehicle. Well, in short, for us, it's going to be an American truck. Now, they're not the cheapest. We know this. There's a choice, of course, of your Chevy, your Ford F trucks, your Rams. They're pretty well in for the American trucks. I don't want to look at anything else, really. But now, we're into a massive cost into these things. Even secondhand, they're expensive. A lot of my friends have tried to say, hey, for the kind of money you spend on American a truck, which can be upwards of 350,000 guys, probably fully decked out, you could get over 400,000 very quickly. For that kind of money, why not buy an Isuzu or a Canter or something like that, and set up an expedition truck and drive that. You could probably pick one of those up for 100,000. 
you can do everything you want to do to it to make it a pretty decent four-wheel drive and a good back on it for another 100,000. So for 200 odd thousand, you got a self-contained touring vehicle. You don't need to tow a caravan at all. That's true. Or you could set the back of it up as a good off-road camper, still take your caravan, leave your van behind and take the expedition truck into places where you don't want to tow the van. That's also true and it's a good idea. Would never rubbish people doing that. The thing is guys, I've been driving buses, trucks, heavy vehicles for a living for over 30 years probably closer to 40. And I know that cab overs and forward control vehicles, no matter what seats you put in them, are not the world's most comfortable thing to drive around in. They're just not. And the other thing is, they're big, they're physically tall, they look cool. Let's, let's, let's get it right out there, they look cool. A good expedition truck on 37s or 40 inch tyres looks fantastic, go anywhere, really well. Not sure, not sure about the beach, just from stuff I've seen, but we'll hold that in reserve. But they certainly look the part and would do the job and get you out there. And certainly all the remote parts of Australia, they will um, definitely do the job for you. Around the forest and the tighter parts might be a bit harder. But the point is they're big, they're tall, they're wide, and they're not very pleasant to ride in. Everything else is great, but to me, they're not comfortable. So I've lent away from them for the American trucks, but don't ever think that an Isuzu or a Mitsubishi or something wouldn't do the job. If you're in the same situation or you're looking down this path down the track, do all the, all the research, have a look. That leads to the title of this clip five years in the making. We've been looking at caravans and the alternatives for five years. Now don't own any of these things yet as I started at the start of a clip guys, but I've made my decisions and I will get to that. So for us, it's American. I pretty well have decided what we're going to get, but really guys, for the I'd like to save that, if you don't mind, and let you know what it is when we get it. Some of you who know me pretty well have probably already worked out what I want and what I plan to get. But for those of you who don't know me personally, then um, hopefully you've either seen some hints and worked it out, or you'll see it when we reveal it when the time comes. On that, the time is going to come sometime after January 2024. I'm retiring from the current job I'm in and I'm going to use some super to buy these things. So that's how we're coming across the money. Would I like to spend less on, and probably get an Isuzu or something? Yes, I would. But I'm not going to drive one. I'm just not. It's not me, guys. Now, with all that in mind, Top end caravans, there's a heap of them. I've seen all sorts of them. I've shortlisted it down to, um, to basically either a Lotus uh, or a Titanium. Well, what's the other one? There is another one. I can't think of it, guys, but they, well, it might be a Zone. Three very good off-road caravans. These are all top of the line vans, guys. Titanium Hardcore ATX, Lotus Trooper, then the Zone. I can't think of the numbers on the Zone. There's a couple of others. Karen and I have looked at Bush Trackers. Great caravans, great caravans. We don't personally want one. It's just not out, not us, but they're certainly a great van. So you'd look at those. We've seen Elite Ballistics. They're a great looking van. They're, there's a heap of them. There really is a lot of good, solid caravans. Now we've made our decision on the caravan too. As soon as I've got the money, I'm ordering it. And we've gone 
literally down the middle of the line. We were going to, didn't know if we wanted a 19 foot six or 20 foot six. We found one that's 20 foot and it's, it's perfect. So that's what we're going to get. Now, once again, guys, those who know me probably know what I'm getting. Those who don't, well, hopefully you'll enjoy the surprise when we get one. But it, it has come down to, ah, oh, that's the other one I was thinking, Masterpiece, Mental Blank. Masterpiece, Optimum Off-Road, Titanium Hardcore, Lotus Trooper, or maybe a Zone. That's it. That's the top four. It will be one of those. It will. It'll be one of those. So that's our thought processes there. There's a lot of cost in that, sure. Certainly a lot more money than if I was buying a, a truck and doing that up. Of course, there was also the options of going a smaller caravan and towing it with what we've currently got. It'd be cheaper, no doubt. And for a holiday alternative, 12 months travel around Australia, that's a good option. It is a good option. But we're not going to do that. We plan to live in it full time and just travel and move on. So we want something to us that's a little bit better for that kind of thing. So that's the thinking, guys. I know I haven't dived very deeply into the research part of it, but you can take a long time researching. Karen and I have been into this for five years, and the reason it takes so long is for us, it's all great to get on the internet and have a look at these things, but it takes a while to be able to go and look at them. Now, caravan camping shows are a place to go. Rose Hill, if you're in New South Wales in Sydney, is a fantastic show. They show off a hell of a lot of caravans. Sadly, they don't necessarily show off all of the ones that are on the shortlist. So Karen and I have, in previous times, gone to Brisbane to be caravan show up there. We've also gone to Melbourne to be caravan show down there because not all the van manufacturers that we're interested in go to all of the shows. But if you're like us and you want to touch and feel and sit in it and look at it and talk to the representatives, it's the only practical way to do it. So it takes a long time to do these things. So guys, if you're in a position like we have been and are, and you're thinking of going full-time traveling, think of your vehicle requirements, your weight requirements in particular, and how you want to live. You can get lighter caravans that we're looking at for sure, but are they up to full-time off-road travel? Do you want to travel off-road? You might not want to. You might be happy with dirt roads, mostly tarred roads. You can get a lighter van. The construction of them is lighter. An off-road caravan is heavy because of the way it's built to survive what you're doing. A truck, as I said earlier, is still a great option. For some of you, it might be the option to go for. If so, have a look at them. Motorhomes of any description, large camper trailers, these are all good options, but the main reason for all of this, in our case, is because caravans have become heavier to the point where our tow rigs can't do it. They can do it, but not legally. You don't want to be that guy who gets pulled into a way bridge and told all oh, your gear's too heavy, you've got to lighten it up, so you've got to dump all your water tanks. So that's impractical. You might get yourself underweight and be able to tow it. Well, where can you go? You've got no water. And the biggest one, insurance. If you are overweight, in your car and or your caravan, your gross combination mass is too big, you're not insured. If your gross combination mass is not too big, but your car is over GVM because you've got a bunch of accessories on it and your table weight is just taking it over the top, you're not insured. Think about this, guys. It's really important. There is so many four wheel drives and caravans traveling around Australia that are basically illegal and certainly uninsured, it's frightening.
we don't want to be that guy. You guys probably don't want to be that guy. I'm sure you don't. So keep that in mind too. And one last reason before I go, I hope I haven't bored you too much, guys. I'm really sorry if I have, but I really believe this information hasn't been put out there enough. But I would still, even though I've said they're not comfortable, consider a, an off-road truck just for the money. But in the end, I, I, I do like American trucks. I'm not going to argue that. But in the end, you know why the main reason we get an American truck? Karen wants one. If she had her way, we'd be a Ram or an F truck or a bloody Chevy, something, and it'd be big. It'd have six inches of lift, it'd have 37 inch tires. The canopy would be fantastic. I've had to be the voice of reason. Yep, we'll get an American truck because I like them, she likes them, they're more comfortable. So that's what we want. I've got to be the voice of reason. We'll get an American truck, but it's only going to be on 35s. Still sounds big. You can certainly get them on 33s, but have you seen what a Ram looks like on 33s or a Chev? Or the F truck? They're a bit boring, aren't they? So let's face it, 35s looks better on them. And that'll keep the canopy down a little bit lower. So instead of the slide out table hitting you in the neck, maybe it'll hit you here and it won't be so bad. Now, apart from all that silliness with Karen's thoughts, I'd just like to say, realistically, I, I also like American trucks. So that's one of the reasons we're getting them. But if you're in a position or coming up to that position, give this a lot of thought, guys. It really matters. Anyway, I hope I haven't bored you too much with this one, guys. I really apologise if I have. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch my clip. Hope you got something out of it. If you're new here and you're still here, thanks for staying this far. And maybe consider subscribing if you like this kind of content. Have a look back through my channel. I've got a lot of trip videos. I've got a lot of campground videos. You might enjoy that stuff. So consider subscribing. Click the notification bell. You'll know when a new clip comes out. And to the old hands and everybody who's been here this long today, Thanks again for taking the time out of your day to watch one of my clips. I really do appreciate it. it uh, it's very heartwarming, guys, just to know that I've got that kind of support. Keep up with us on social media. I'm pretty slack on it, I admit. I'm not as active on Facebook and Instagram as I should be, but I'm trying to get that sorted. So uh, keep, keep in touch with us. Message me through either of those modes. It'd be great. Have a look at our website. I haven't got very much merch at the moment. At present, all I've got is stickers at mudduckstouringaustralia.com. No, no, it's just .com. Mudduckstouringaustralia.com. Down, it's down below. Have a look there. At the moment, the only thing I've got is stickers, and there's a brief history as to how we came about what we do. More merch coming down the track. Looking at probably patches next, and then we'll move into T-shirts. But just for the time being, all I've got is stickers, guys. I haven't got the funds to buy too much stuff, sorry. If you want to consider helping the channel, maybe buy a sticker or two. Perhaps consider a membership for a couple of bucks a month on YouTube. That'll help me out. No obligation, guys. The videos are still there free for everybody to see. So uh, thanks again. Cheers to everybody from Steve and Kaz. She can't be here today. I've she'd have been sitting here answering questions too. But she can't be here today. But she'll go home and direct and produce and tell me how to edit this clip. All the best, guys. Like I said, cheers from Steve and Kaz at Mud Ducks Touring Australia. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.